Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How y'all doing today? Welcome back to Mr. Morrill's Algebra 2 class. And today we're going to continue with polynomials. We're going to move on to section 5-3. We're going to be learning how to multiply polynomials today. It's actually quite simple. We already know uh, what we do with exponents when we multiply the same base. We already know how to multiply monomials. And today we're just going to multiply polynomials. So it may be multiplying a monomial times a trinomial, or a binomial times a binomial, or a binomial times a trinomial, or a binomial raised to the fifth power, and we have to multiply that binomial times itself five times. I'm going to teach you all those skills here today. But before we do that, simply remember the distributive property. Remember the distributive property states that when I have a value on the outside of a parenthetic situation, a parenthesis, I'm going to multiply that value to everything inside of the parentheses. So if I have a times parentheses b plus c, that's going to give me a b plus a c when I distribute that a. If I have it with a negative sign, it's the same exact thing. I have a times b minus this time a times c. So when I have a distributive property, I'm simply distributing multiplying that outside number to everything on the inside. So, let's get to it. If I were to tell you to simplify each here, my friends, you literally are just going to distribute. So, remember that you multiply numbers with numbers, variables with variables. So, negative 2x squared times 5x cubed is going to be negative 10x to the fifth. Because remember, whenever you multiply the same base, what do you do to the exponents? You add them. Excellent. So I got negative 2x squared times negative 4x squared. That's positive 8x to the fourth. And then negative 2x squared times 3x is negative 6x cubed. And negative 2x squared times negative 4 is positive 8x squared. I have no like terms. I'm done. If I had like terms, I would have added them together and gone from there. But here, I do not have like terms, so I cannot add them together. Yes, sir. Second. Sorry, buddy. Feel better, man. Okay, now, I got 3y times everything in this parentheses. Let's distribute. 3y times 2y squared is 6y cubed. Y. Remember, y times y squared, you keep the base, add the exponents. 3y times 5y is plus 5y squared. And then 3y times negative 3 is negative 9y. No like terms. I'm done. Pretty simple, right? So far? You guys with me? Okay. Next, negative 5x to the fifth times this four-term polynomial. This actually quartic four-term polynomial because... The uh, degree of the inside polynomials are 4. Quartic. So let's do it. Distribute. That's going to be negative 10x to the ninth plus 15x to the eighth minus 5x to the, uh, that's a 5, so 7. And last but not least, plus 20x to the fifth. Why? Ah, I threw a little curveball there. You can't combine those, can you? No, so they just stay just like that. I don't have any like terms. Bada beam, bada boom, I'm done. Does that make sense? Promise? Yes, sir. <laughs> Always write the answer in center form. Thank you. Great question. All right, next. Multiplying polynomials. When we're multiplying polynomials, it's very easy if you remember this FOIL, okay? FOIL is first, outer, inner, last. Let's see how it works. I think that sometimes people can teach FOIL a little bit differently. I teach it one particular way, and this is what I, this is how I interpret FOIL, okay? First, outer, inner, last. I like to say that the first variable or the first term, okay, of the first polynomial, so first, goes to everything in the outer. So what does that mean? This x gets multiplied to that x and that x. That's the first outer. 
First, you multiply everything to the outer polynomial. Then, inner last. The inside value of the first polynomial gets multiplied to everything as well. So, I make my life really easy by just showing myself what I'm doing. x times x is x squared. x times 8 is 8x. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times 8 is negative 40. Come by like terms, x squared plus 3x minus 40. Done. Done. Have a question, my man? Okay. Next, distribute. One at a time. First term multiplied to everything in the second polynomial. Then the second term multiplied to everything in the second polynomial. So 6x times 4x, I've got 24x squared. 6x times 3y, I've got plus 18xy. Negative 5y times 4x, negative 20xy. Negative 5y times 3y is negative 15y squared. I have like terms. You guys know how to recognize those now. So when I simplify this, it should be 24x squared minus 2xy, because these guys here, they combined, minus 15y squared. And that's my answer. Does that make sense? Cool beans. 4x squared times a negative 2x is a negative 8x cubed. 4x squared times 5y is positive 20x squared y. 3y squared times negative 2x is negative 6xy squared. 3y squared times 5y is positive 15y cubed. Believe it or not, here this time, you do not have like terms, and you're done. You cannot combine anything. Last but not least, 2x times 3x, that's 6x squared. 2x times 5, that's plus 10x. Negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x. Negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. Add like terms, 6x squared plus 7x minus 5. I know I'm going fast, guys. I don't have much time today. I'm sorry. But does that make sense, though? Promise? You get in the rhythm here? Cool beans. May I continue? Thank you. Now, multiply a polynomial times another polynomial is just as easy. Remember, what we did was uh, binomial times binomial here. Now, I can multiply any polynomial times any polynomial. It's very similar to FOIL in the sense that, um, in the sense that each term of the first polynomial must be multiplied to every term of the second polynomial. So this is the same exact stuff, same thing, except everything from the first polynomial must be multiplied to everything from the second polynomial. What am I talking about? This x must be multiplied to that x squared. So x times x squared is x cubed. x times 2x, positive 2x squared. x times negative 5, negative 5x. Now, use the 3 the same way. 3 times x squared is positive 3x squared. 3 times 2x is positive 6x. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Combine like terms x cubed is by himself. 2x squared and 3x squared, that's positive 5x squared. Negative 5x plus 6x is positive x. And then I've got minus 15. No other like terms I can add, and I'm done. Does that make sense? Now, <laughs> um, yeah, let me, let me just do as much as I can here today. Okay, check out B. 2x squared times x squared, we've got 2x to the fourth. 2x squared times negative 4x, that's negative 8x cubed. 2x squared times 3 is positive 6x squared. Now, negative 3x times x squared is negative 3x cubed. Negative 3x times negative 4x is positive 12x squared. Negative 3x times positive 3 is negative 9x. 
And then we have one last one, guys. 4. 4 times x squared is another plus 4x squared. 4 times negative 4x is a negative 16x. 4 times 3 is another 12. And now I add like terms. So I've got 2x to the 4th. Um, and I've got negative 8x cubed and negative 3x cubed. So that's negative 11x cubed. I like to get rid of them so I don't get confused. 6x squared plus 12x squared is 18x squared. And 18x squared um, plus 4x squared is 22x squared. And then I got a negative 9x and a negative 16x. That's negative 25x. And I've got a... Uh, um, uh, plus 12. Yeah, that's it. The x's are gone. Plus 12. So it's long, but it's easy. It's a lot of minutia, but it's easy. Now, I'm not going to do C because I have other stuff to do, but I definitely want to look at D. Most people get confused, and I'll tell you right now in a second. Okay, so the big mistake that happens here for D is the following. They, people think that you have to distribute that exponent. And actually, you don't distribute that exponent. Okay, you don't distribute that exponent. What happens here is, if it was like this, yes, that would be 9x squared for sure. But that's not what I have here, do I? I have a binomial here being raised to a third power. So whenever you have a binomial or a trinomial raised to a power, guys, other than one, multiply it by itself that many times. It's just like an exponent. If I had 5 cubed, isn't that 5 times 5 times 5? Well, I've got x plus 3 cubed, so it's x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x plus 3. Now, in this case, this is what happens. Multiply the first two together, then multiply by the other one. So, x times x is x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. So, that's x squared plus 6x plus 9 now times the x plus 3. x squared times x is x cubed x squared times 3 is plus 3x squared. 6x times x is plus 6x squared. 6x times 3 is plus 18x. 9 times x is 9x. And 9 times 3 is 27. Add like terms. x cubed plus 9x squared plus 27x plus 27. Does that make sense? Promise? Okay, I'm skipping C, guys. If you want to do C on your own and check later with me, see if you did it right, you may. Okay, now, I want to get you guys out of here in time, so you're going to have to bear with me. I need to teach you two more sections, but real easy. <laughs> okay, and this is wrong. Why did I do that? That should be a plus here and a plus here. Sorry. Remember how I, how I told you guys, when you have x plus y squared, or cubed to the fourth. You multiply the binomial by itself that many times, right? So x plus y squared, you could do it the long way. And you could just go ahead and multiply that out. Or you could remember the formula. It's the first term squared plus two times the first term times the second term. 2xy plus the last term squared. For example, x plus 5 squared. You could do this the long way. x plus 5 times x plus 5. x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. Five, 5 times x is 5x. Five, 5 times 5 is 25. So I got x squared plus 10x plus 25. You could do it that way, boys, for sure. However, 
in the future, knowing this is going to behoove you when we are doing the reverse of this called factoring. So, can you go through it again, Mr. Moore? Sure. When I have x plus 5 squared, it's the first term squared plus 2 times the first term times the second term plus the second term squared. Doesn't that give me exactly the same thing? Now, right now you're looking at it and going, whoa, more. you know what, dude, that's nice and all. You know, we love you, but we're going to do it the long way. Guess what? So did I. I did it the long way for many, 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 many moons until I realized I'm wasting my time here, okay? <laughs> if I have a minus here, it stays the same thing, guys. It's the first term squared, but this time minus 2 times the first term times the second term plus the second term squared. Yes, sir. If it was cubed, no. Sorry, my brother. When it's cubed, it's something else, and we'll get there, I promise. Thank you, though, for asking and caring. So again, if I have x minus 6 squared, I could do it the long way, or I could say, okay, first term squared minus 2 times the first term times the second term times, I mean, plus the second term squared. So it would be x squared minus 12x plus 36. Guys, I am not... I am not going to force you to memorize the right pattern. I'm not. I will not do that to you. I will not do that to you. I'm going to ask you like men. Guys, give me one more second. I'm sorry. Just two more minutes and I'll, and I'll wrap this up. I promise. I'm asking you like men though and out there in the internet, I'm asking you like adults to try to learn this because it's going to make your life easier. Okay? Now, I promise I'm not going to waste your time. We won't do any of these examples. If I were you, maybe do one or two of these to make sure you understand it. But just real quick, first term squared plus 2 times the first term times the second term plus the second term squared. Done. See how easy that is? First term squared. Uh, there's a minus here. So minus 2 times the first term times the second term plus the second term squared. So that's 4m squared minus 20m plus 25. I've been doing this for a long time. I've memorized it already. Do it the long way if you have to. You'll do enough of those the long way. You'll be like, I'm tired of this. I'm going to memorize it now. Okay? Last thing I promise. I promise. And you're out of here. Difference of squares. This one's Mickey Mouse. This one you've got to memorize. Because if you don't, you're just wasting your time. Whenever you have um, the same first and second term, but one of them is being added and one of them is being subtracted, you have what's called a difference of squares. And what's going to happen here is it's going to be the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. So it's the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. For example, x minus 5 times x plus 5. First term squared minus the second term squared. Done. Literally. Literally. Look how easy. x minus 3, x plus 3. Oh, it's a difference of squares. First term squared minus second term squared. Done. 4x plus 3y, 4x minus 3y. Oh, it's a difference of square. First term squared minus second term squared. x plus 6 times x minus 6. Oh, it's a difference of squares. First term squared minus second term squared. x plus 6y, x minus 6y. First term squared minus second term squared. Now, the question may be, what if we want to do it the long way, Moral? Do it. You're going to see that the middle terms cancel out, and you're left with this anyways. Thank you so much for your patience, guys. Have a great day. I hope you learned a lot. Get out of here.